so Fuse uh, is building uh, an infrastructure for community currencies. Um, I think uh, the perspective that I had uh, about this space was when, when my previous company um, was trying to do a community currency in Tel Aviv. And the first version was just like, we saw that a lot of, we have a lot of traction uh, from people that just come from different places in the world and trying to mint a currency on the Bitcoin blockchain. And this is what uh, pre preceded the Ethereum. So in 2014, 15, there was a wave of uh, uh, what was called colored coins protocol. So it was a way to, to just take Bitcoin transactions and paint them. This is gold and this is a movie ticket. Uh, this transaction represents a, a stock uh, or even, you know, brand equities, a lot of stuff that people do uh, nowadays. But uh, uh, those were like early ideas and experiments. And um, <clears throat> what we, we said is let's uh, take a pause and look at different solutions because Bitcoin was definitely not delivering. Uh, Bitcoin didn't want us. Uh, uh, there was Bitcoin bloat. It wasn't meant for that use case, uh, there was a lot of animosity between teams, no collaboration. Uh, so we said, oh, we'll, we'll just start and, and do, some, do it ourselves. So we will be consumer facing. Uh, we started in Tel Aviv, uh, like in, in my neighborhood, it was like one street, uh, which we put like Colu stickers, uh, this business accepts Colu. And we had a developer uh, wallet uh, that was based on Bitcoin. So it was actually like going and, and minting on Bitcoin. It was super expensive. It was crazy. Uh, uh, slow. So uh, the lesson was uh, quickly get it off the, the blockchain. And I think in, in a perspective of, uh, of a few years, it, it's really inspiring to see how much uh, this space uh, moved uh, forward. And I really think uh, uh, some of the trade-offs that, uh, that we had back then, like do it centralized or decentralized. And, and I totally agree with uh, Giuseppe that, uh, that said not everything needs to be represented on a blockchain. Uh, blockchain is a means, not an end. I think uh, that was the, the the feeling in 2017 that blockchain uh, is a uh, is a magic word, but it's a bit like Linux for me. Like it's more like Linux. Like it, it was Linux was more useful for developers in, in the early days, but now it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. Nobody really feels it. So we think uh, we we started fused with the, this idea of let's make this technology something that uh, they don't really feel, they don't really touch. Um, I actually made a, a small demo because uh, I didn't want uh, to go through launching everything, but you can actually go to the website. You don't need technical knowledge. You can just mint uh, a, a currency or just use DAI. It doesn't have to be like a new currency. It could be um, any, any Ethereum uh, uh, token. Um, and what we did is, uh, is just make it accessible. So I'm sharing my screen now. Uh, for a community that I created for uh, Community Currency Alliance. And again, I said that uh, we're building a layer below, uh, um, uh, below Giuseppe, and we actually, let's see. Oh, I think I need to join the, the call again. Yeah, Fuse.io looks like it's making Giuseppe's job starting these things, like the technical side, just a breeze. At least that's yeah. from what I can see. Is that the the you know obviously there's a lot of work to making a currency, a lot of cultural work that needs to be done for it to ever work. But uh, and the technical stuff do, almost doesn't matter. But it looks like Fuse.io makes the technical stuff just like yeah. something you don't have to worry about. So actually, we, we've been working a lot with uh, Giuseppe. I actually met him uh, uh, in uh, Sardinia last year, and uh, we've actually been in touch since uh, the Peloton days. And I think uh, th those collaborations are really important. I, I, I'm really looking at, at an infrastructure level at what you can do with blockchains, but I really focus on, on this uh, use case, which is a long tail, low volume, high velocity use cases where you need the, a currency where you can move it uh, from side to side with a model that is sim more similar to SMSs than to Visa. So if we can just make our payments work in push and if we can make our payments work with a fixed uh, a fee instead of uh, doing a lot of fraud detection, consumer protection, uh, uh, risk management, there's a lot of costs that are really irrelevant when I want to just pay at the store. And I think community currencies didn't really 
um, uh, go through that phase. So uh, I'm going now uh, to, like this is our default community. If you go to the App Store, uh, iOS and, or Android, um, I'm just uh, going to switch to the community I just created. And the whole idea is that uh, this uh, wallet makes this community usable. So a user joins the community, we're creating a, a contract for him. Um, and uh, this contract is, uh, is a proxy contract called, uh, it's, it's actually Argent contracts. We use the Argent for this. Uh, and now I'm joining the Community Currency Alliance and I'm getting 50 CCA. And if I want to send it to any, any one of my contacts on my phone, uh, let's send it uh, to my brother. Uh, that's it. That's the whole process. So the whole idea is that the, um, the transaction needs to be fast and it needs to be non-custodial. Uh, it needs to be um, without fees and uh, instant. So I think we're bridging the gap. I think we're still not fully there, but this uh, application is open source. Again, part of this vision to just give the code, give uh, like release the code, release uh, the infrastructure, uh, all the IP around it. So no one company can do all the the money from selling it or, you know, mining data over it or making fees with it. So uh, the, the only thing that you can't fork is actually the network itself, which approves the transactions, which again, I, I don't think like when we're looking at long tail of communities, I don't think there will be like one infrastructure that will be running all of this. There will be the Wixes and the WordPresses and the Shopify's and the Amazons, and they're all doing the same thing, but in different models. I think uh, Fuse as a, as, a, as a room there just to help people, you know, on board. Uh, so that's the, the quick demo. I, yeah, I can, I can share it uh, later. Um, uh, also a store, plugin, fiat ramp, there's a bunch of stuff I can show, but the, the bottom line is that uh, we're no longer at this trade -off of, you know, centralized, decentralized. Some of the data, you know, it doesn't have to be on the blockchain. Suddenly you see those things that can, so. I mean, I, I'm blown away that you just did that. I just sent some, uh, some created a currency, got to join, yeah. join it, and then just sent it. I, but I got to understand, how did you get an address generated for your brother? So it's a proxy wallet. Uh, we're creating every, uh, 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 an account on, on the user behalf, and he controls it with a private key on the phone. When a, user's, uh, when a user doesn't have an account on Fuse, we create an account on his behalf and he claims it when he, he logs with his phone number. The, the whole idea was to, you know, uh, no fees, no public keys, no private keys. Like that's like one of the, on, the biggest challenges that we're trying to, to do. Um, so a 90 year old person can use it. My grandfather uh, uh, has a Facebook account, is very active. Uh, I really think that uh, <laughs> I'm looking at those use cases, you know, falafel store sellers, we need to make this uh, uh, usable by them. And for that, we need to like erase crypto. Um, and, and actually uh, Giuseppe, with Giuseppe, we're talking a lot about how we can make it actually usable for all people, like a lot of things from, from real life. Because again, I'm not specialist in the use case, uh, but I really try to narrow what we're trying to do uh, to exactly Giuseppe's world. Very cool. Okay, just, just to go, I'm sorry, I, I always have these technical hangups. So you create a contract wallet for someone and, yes. and do you have uh, as like uh, the Fuse.io central provider has some sort of like uh, ownership or, or creation? No, of it's, that it's, 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 it's issued on the, on the Fuse network. Uh, it's exactly like Argent on Ethereum, but and then, it's on, on Fuse. And uh, then... And then when the person signs on, they create an address for themselves. And then somehow that address gets ownership yeah. over that yeah. contract wallet. Think about it like escrow. It's, uh, it's waiting for a person to redeem it. Uh, actually, there's a bunch of companies that build stuff like that. With contracts, you can do very efficient escrow. Uh, you can do expiration. If somebody didn't redeem it, it goes back. Like there's a bunch of stuff. It, it, it's endless. With contracts just give a lot, a lot of uh, uh, ways to, to make it, uh, you know, rate limits that we got from Argent, uh, uh, social recovery, uh, uh, things that uh, really d don't require our, our developers to build, just the fact that we fit the protocol, you know, we can benefit from all those features. That's amazing. I didn't know Argent was so far along that it was so forkable and, and uh, nice to no, work No, the with. contracts, only the contracts. Our, oh, yeah. our that is actually fully open source, backend, frontend. It's built in Flutter. It's for iOS, Android, desktop. Amazing. Uh, 
it's uh, but uh, we use the Argent's con contracts, and that's the nice thing about crypto. You can mix and match. And now we have interoperability with Argent, which is, I think, very important that wallets can exchange between themselves, being wallet agnostic. Uh, anyone else got a question? Um, somebody was asking about the the, re the revenue model for, for Fuse. Uh, we have a question here from Matthew Slater. So we are a, a network that uh, you need uh, to pay a fee, just like on uh, Mainnet or XDA, it's very similar. Uh, we want it uh, uh, to have to be one cent per transaction. Costs don't, don't need to be free. There is a cost, but the cost of ownership of the infrastructures shouldn't grow. Um, so that's the, the vision that if people can uh, do transaction in a low cost, they will do just more transactions. So what we, we're visioning is in three years from now, uh, easily 100 million transactions a day. So I'm not saying only on, on our infrastructure, but you know, in day-to-day in -day use cases, we saw it in, in Tel Aviv with Colo. There is a very strong uh, consumer demand for uh, payments on mobile. It doesn't have anything to do with, uh, with community currencies. People just want to pay with their phone. Uh, we think uh, Visa is not giving the goods. Like it's not really something like, it's like, you know, you leapfrog computers. Some countries will leapfrog Visa. Uh, 